So after discussing FM modulation, now we are going to focus on FM demodulation. There are uh, generally two main techniques. So one of them is based on phase lock loop. So to understand how a phase lock loop works, you can refer to my video on phase lock loop. And so here we will see how a phase lock loop or PLL can be used to demodulate an FM signal. So figure below shows the architecture of a phase lock loop. So we have this as the input signal. So in our case, this would be the FM signal and theta I represents the phase of the in incoming FM signal. So we have a mixer here. Uh, the mixer mixes the incoming signal and the output of the voltage controlled oscillator. So it's an oscillator whose voltage can be varied depending upon, uh, whose, whose frequency can be varied depending upon the value of the input voltage that is at the input of the voltage control oscillator. So after multiplication, we pass this uh, product through a loop filter, which gives us the value of the error between the two uh, signals. One is the incoming input and the uh, other is the signal that is coming from the voltage controlled oscillator. So uh, E naught is the error signal. Uh, it changes the frequency of the oscillator and keeps the loop locked by forcing the VCO, the voltage control oscillator output, to track the phase and hence the frequency of the input sinusoid. So based upon the error, the frequency of this VCO is adjusted so that it is as close to the frequency of the incoming signal as possible, right? So when it's exactly equal to this incoming signal, then it's called, uh, we can say that the loop is locked. So now we're going to uh, uh, going to see some uh, mathematical expressions which uh, will uh, enable us to understand how this PLL can be used as a demodulation uh, of uh, FM signal. So if VCO in input voltage is, let's say, E naught T, as we saw in the previous uh, figure, its output is a sinusoid with instantaneous frequency given by. So this is the instantaneous frequency of the VCO. So here C is the circuit constant of the VCO and it converts voltage to frequency. Uh, this is the voltage that is coming as an error signal. So when it's multiplied with C, we get a frequency here which is added to the free running frequency of the VCO. Uh, that is, uh, if there is no error signal, the frequency that the VCO has, omega C, is called the free running frequency. So the difference between theta i t, which is the uh, phase of the input FM signal, and theta naught t, that is the phase at the output of the voltage control oscillator. Phase of the carrier at the output of the voltage control oscillator is equal to theta ET. Let's say this is the error phase, right? So the idea is the PLL tries to reduce this error. So it wants to remove this error phase. So let's say uh, the PLL is in lock with the input signal. Input is this as we so here, so let's consider the situation when this PLL is locked to the input signal. So the voltage coming out of this or the carrier coming out of this is in exact phase with the incoming signal. If there is phase and frequency matching. So if that is the case, uh, let's say what is the output. Uh, let's say uh, we need to see the behavior of the error signal if the PLL is locked to the input signal, which is FM in our case. So here, theta, the if it's an FM signal, so uh, the theta instantaneous angle would be equal to KF, integral of M uh, alpha, T alpha. And this pi by two is because we considered a sine carrier, right? Uh, so it's shifted from the cosine carrier, which was which is in this case, as shown here. So we have a cosine carrier here, 
and we have a sign here so these two are shifted uh, so so this instantaneous uh, or the input phase of the fm signal is shifted by pi by 2 so that's why it's shown here if we consider cosine here as well which we can do to generalize this uh, this pi by 2 will not appear so theta not t uh, that is at the output the phase of the uh, signal at the output of the voltage controlled oscillator is given by uh, this theta i t this much minus theta error t so where is this expression coming from so what we have done is we have shifted this theta naught on this side and theta e the error phase comes on this side now we as we said if we assume pll to be locked then the derivative of this term would be very small because if it's locked then this term would be very small the variations in this term the error phase would be very small and if we take the derivative of, the, of that it would be even smaller or in fact as we see there is a theta dot e t so it, it would be very close to zero the derivative now how can we write theta naught t in terms of the error e naught t the voltage so it's the integral of the voltage the time integral and multiplied by c the constant of the circuit that converts voltage into frequency so since this complete term is a frequency when we take the integral of this term with respect to time it becomes a phase as we can see here so uh, this is theta naught t the phase which is dependent upon the uh, e naught t now uh, so uh, what is e naught t how can we write e naught t in terms of theta naught t so if we take derivative on both sides of this expression we are left with e naught t the error voltage 1 over c because this c goes on the other side and a derivative of this term which can be seen with the dot so uh, the error signal which is a voltage v in terms of theta naught t derivative of theta naught t which is the output of the voltage control oscillator is written in this form when we substitute theta naught t the derivative of theta naught t from this expression we substitute it here we get this equation in this equation the term this is a constant so derivative would be zero as we saw here since theta et is very small so its derivative would almost be equal to zero and we we are taking a derivative so this integral is uh, removed and we are left with kf divided by c into mt so the idea is the error signal is equal to this value uh, after through this discussion we have seen that this error signal is equal to kf divided by c and then we have the uh, mt as shown here so this is mt so continuously since the frequency of this input signal will keep on changing because it's an fm signal so the error voltage will adjust accordingly this error voltage is equal to kf which is by divided by c which is a constant and then multiplied by mt so whatever we are getting here is directly proportional to mt so we can say that e naught t is proportional to mt for an fm signal so that is how we have converted frequency variations in the input signal to voltage variation at the output and that is how we can demodulate an fm signal